We're here on Drum Channel, and we have quite a unique show. Um, if you were pursuing a career in drumming, and you thought you might someday have the opportunity to play with Jason Aldean, Kelly Clarkson, Marilyn Manson, a huge list of, of artists, Smash Mouth, Steely Dan, Toto, Frankie Valli, you would probably think you needed five or six drum teachers, because those are so different genres of music. But you're going to find out something right now, <clears throat> that one teacher was able to take all of these great musicians on their career. His name is Ed Sof. Ed, I usually introduce the guests we have on Drum Channel, because mm -hmm. these are your students. Please go around and introduce them, and, and we have a surprise guest for you there uh, who is on FaceTime with us. All right. Well, to be completely honest, these guys, it's been so long ago, and these guys are so old now that I've completely <laughs> washed them out of my memory. Oh my Thank God. you very much for watching yeah. today. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed your show. night. Here we I go. <laughs> no. Excellent. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are these are. Uh, it's this is really very special because I haven't seen some of these guys for for years. Um, just followed their careers and stayed out of their way, and it's it's a an honor to be able to have them here and for them to be able to share their experiences because they're all they've all been doing wonderful things in the music world and drumming world. Craig Pilo, Blair Sinta. And Rich Redmond, Duple Boy, <laughs> and Sean Jones. And via Skype from Germany, where he's currently touring with Cher, Jason Sutter. Thank you for coming in, Jason. So, Absolutely. Great to a, be here. Got a question for all you guys. Go back. Jason, I'll start with you. You recall your first lesson with Ed. What was your, what was your reaction to that? Well, it was a unique situation because I had studied with another drum teacher who Ed was friends with. I had seen Ed actually come through at the Crane School of Music with Jim Peterzak. He was friends, and so I had, I had met Ed there briefly at a clinic. And I think Jim had put in a word, unbeknownst to me, to Ed that to say, hey, could you give this student of mine lessons? He's coming in as a freshman your first year. And it was a unique situation because I was an underclassman. Usually as an underclassman, you don't get... A lesson with Ed until you kind of reach a certain level. So my first lesson, because I was a freshman, you study snare drum. So I walked in and Ed was like, well, I guess we're, we're studying snare drum. So I, I can't imagine you had a lot of students there, Ed, that studied snare drum, but maybe you did. But um, so we literally, Ed pulled out his Coopermans and we opened up the Wilcoxon book. And <laughs> so it was kind of, that was my first experiences with Ed was actually studying snare drum, which was which was great because we basically went all the way from the very beginning, you know, the basics. So, um, but you know, I, I felt like, I guess I felt like everyone was so terrified of, 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 of Ed just because of his, you know, Thanks. renown <laughs> as, <a> teacher, <laughs> as an educator and his resume and his playing. And, and so for me, I felt pretty comfortable because I, unlike everybody else who had that kind of fear going into it, I felt like, I had met him once and I had this connection with my my teacher when I was very young, Pete, Jim Peterzak. So I, I, you know, we just had a great time. You know, I, I think that's a unique experience because I think most people going into it were like terrified and I wasn't. And we had a great time playing snare drum, you know, studying snare drum. So why don't you? Uh... Uh, yeah, I was not terrified either. And I don't recall. Why not? My first lesson. <laughs> I was excited. You know, I needed I needed proper guidance at that time and so I was excited I wasn't afraid probably should have been but um, I, I I remember looking forward to it I don't remember the exact lesson I remember plenty of others but not the first one <laughs> we'll get to those later Great. Then, a little bit uh, I vividly remember my first lesson and I walked out of I remember walking out of it going I don't know how to play drums <laughs> but you know it was the, it was it was <laughs> I mean it, look in, in in retrospect it was it was everything that Ed teaches and it was becoming aware of of what you're doing while you're playing and being able to teach yourself and but mm -hmm. the the first one can be brutal because as it, when you're just pl sitting in your basement or playing with your rock band as a kid you're just playing you're just you know and you're not paying it well you know at least I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing so 
In interesting yeah. perspective. Because yeah. you were playing and you were a good drummer to find out I mean, the experience with a private teacher you know, was... For, yeah, in a certain square room. mileage, I was a good drummer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you think? I, re I remember our lessons were always taped with those gigantic, like, RCA mm -hmm. devices with the... VHS. You know, VHS, yeah. yeah. We still had those, too. And I took it home, and this is my, my then first wife. She was like, you look terrified, honey. <laughs> <laughs> like, she was watching my body language. But I had come from, like, I, I, w I did my master's at the University of North Texas, and so, so Ed got a hold of me after, you know, four and a half years of, 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 of smaller market you know, doing a lot of playing and then coming to the University of North Texas and uh, there's 150 drummers that want to play in 10 bands. And it was a really great reflection of the real music business and, mm -hmm. and Ed gave us those sophisms and all those things to put in our toolbox and, and it was a really, really great thing. But I was terrified, yeah. You remember? <laughs> uh, it was a very humbling experience. I was a freshman. I didn't make a lab band. Walk in there and review your tape. You know, this is what you need to work on. It's just like, you thought you were good, you come in there and you realize, oof, we got a long way to go. Yeah. So looking back, you know, at your experiences, maybe we'll, we'll start with you over there in Germany. Um, things that you took away, you think, if you could come up with, I would say three, but any, any number of things that you took away that was really important to you, that young students who are reliving your life right now, because they might be at the university, that uh, was the most important things when you got the gigs that you got. And you have such a diverse group of gigs that you've gotten. That's something that's really important for everybody to understand, too, your, your education background. You know, for me, what I took away from studying with Ed, right, what we're talking about, I mean, I think Blair just brought up a great top, uh, an idea, a concept that I think when I was thinking about this, you know, really what I feel like at this point in my career, you know, we are old, and uh, we've been doing this for a long time. I've been playing probably professionally for about 25 years, which is crazy wow. to say that, you know. But um, one of the things I think that Ed, that I, I really took away from that, that I'm still using now, I mean, I'm, I was, I'm using it literally now, like tomorrow, um, is, all, is learning how to, to teach yourself, to reassess your playing, to be aware of like, to listen, you know, things like that, that like Rich was saying, you come in with this experience that you, you have and you think, you know, you, you have a you have a perspective, but really I think what Ed did is just blew it all wide open for me. And so I feel like something that I, I took away, especially from Ed, is, is to constantly be listening to yourself and listening to everyone around you. And I feel like that has served me well in this these different auditions or different gigs because I'm always paying attention. Um, I'm listening. And um, I think in some cases, a lot of times when drummers are going into auditions, they're listening to themselves. They're not listening to everyone else. And when you're listening to somebody else, it's easier to pick up on what they're doing. And I'm the new guy usually in the room for an audition, obviously. And when they hear that, you can see them go, wow, this guy's listening. And then all of a sudden you're making music, which is the point. And then you have more to offer the audience. And, and that's another thing I think with Ed, I think he's, he was able to point out your your weaknesses, you know, and that's, that's important. But he was also able to kind of help you discover your strengths, you know, and one of the strengths I know he pointed out for me was that I listened and I had a good ear. And, and to me, that is something that, you know, there's always kind of, you know, he, he was able to kind of help give you a certain boost of confidence. Um, at the same time, you know, um, kind of, you know, inspire you out of just, his sheer ability to play circles around all of us, if that makes sense, you know, just made you run to the practice room every time you'd see him play with a small group or something. So um, that was, that's, I think the biggest thing that I still kind of go back to though, is, is the teaching yourself and constantly listening to what you're playing and then reassessing it for me on a daily basis on a gig like this, which is so diverse that I'm constantly you know, teaching myself every day going, wait a minute, this could be better. What if I tried this? And it's like, Oh, that worked. You know, or that didn't, or whatever. So, and a gig like this is with Cher. That's where you're. That's who you're out on the road with now, correct? Yeah, I'm out with Cher, and that literally runs the gamut. I've never done a gig that covers so many much grounds. I'm playing, you know, five songs on a full Roland kit, and then you know, I'll play everything from like double bass, heavy metal to, you know, to Hal Blaine's groovy, swingy drum parts for, um, you know, beat goes on, or you know, it's just a million different styles. So. To me, that that helped kind of tie that ties in. I'm constantly reassessing 
how, how I'm approaching the dynamics and how I'm, you know, um, just approaching these different parts to make it all kind of flow and be as musical as possible. What you've just said is such a perfect reflection on the course that Ed has put together for all of your students out there here on Drum Channel. Because it's these, you're talking about all the subtleties that make it happen. And um, we've had examples, as Ed probably did with you, when he'll play something, he'll say, okay, here's drummer one, here's drummer two, here's drummer three. The first drummer is the way you would hear an average drummer play it, and there's a night and day difference between that drummer one, two, and three. And some of it is right. just that those subtleties you're talking about, which obviously learning that, which is why it's so important, I think, for everybody to have a private instructor, because that's where you're going to get that mentorship. Find a good private teacher out there, because I can see what you just said in that long list of things in your career, as, as diverse as it is, as far as genres go, with Cher right now, which even within that one gig, there's a whole lot of things you're doing, but just think about that compared to all the other music that you've played in your life. Um, that knowledge is, it's different than just a, a basic fundamental knowledge of how to play the drum set. It's the things that makes you a musician as opposed to a good drummer. Mm -hmm. if that makes mm -hmm. sense to everybody. Yeah. I think. It, it yeah. is, and, and what you just said, that sums it up. It was like, Ed helped me, you know, uh, become a better musician. Sum it up, period. You know, and that's that's helped kind of maybe make me stand out over, over all these other great drummers. You know, good drummers. Then they're you know they're the great drummers who really I think like everyone we're talking about in this room where you get that experience with someone like him where he shows you the way. You know, this is how you do it. This is this is how it's done, and then it's up to you to kind of just implement it. And then that's I think why we're all sitting here. You know, mm -hmm. Sean. Um... Things that you would think of a young drummer who's at college right now. Um, you're the youngest in the group, correct? Yes. The baby in the group? The baby, yeah. The millennial. <laughs> By far. <laughs> By far, yeah. By the way, Jason, saying that they're the older, the older group, that's all relative because I can tell you they're kids compared to the older man here. Jason's older than us, too, right? Oh, uh -oh. Jason's Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we had to get that in. Uh, Sean, uh, things that, you know, are the subtleties and the difference that you really took away. Ed would never say what you were doing wrong. He would say, you know, drummer one, two, or three, you explain to me what the difference is. And so you'd have to go through the process of thinking what is going to, you know, why don't I sound like this? He wouldn't just say, well, you're not doing this. He would say, you have to figure it out yourself. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's just been mind-blowing at uh, helping me realize the things that I constantly need to work on, even still to today. So it was able to... Um, help me go through everything. I just thought of something I hadn't thought of before, talking about teaching yourself. Uh, another experience of having a great instructor is you're going to learn how to become a good instructor. Because you're going to, learning how to play and learning how to teach are, I would say, two different skill sets, right, Ed? Can be, yeah. Uh, so what, it, what would you say in terms of... I would, yeah, I would say just like the art is in the details. Because would, we would have to always transcribe this. So I, would, I transcribed a, a Gene Krupa solo. I transcribed an Elvin Jones thing, and we had to have it down to every little grace note at the parts of the snare drum that he was hitting. And uh, yeah, just being a lifelong student, and, and even just like getting a hold of me and just making me play quarter notes on the ride cymbal and telling me all the different ways that we could play the jazz ride cymbal pattern. The, the, the art is in that details. Is there an accent on two and fours? Every note accent is, is ding, da, gutting, da, gutting, like all that stuff, it's, it's heavy. One of the mm -hmm. lessons we just did, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blair. Um, um, I mean, I would echo all this stuff. I, I think one of the, I'm thinking about like 20 things right now, but I think one of the main things is, I think Ed was, and we're just, we're just talking about awareness in general. And I remember, I do remember distinctly at some point, maybe in my, probably my third year or so, like starting to realize that it wasn't always, it's not, it wasn't all just about drumming and music. It was about, life you know what i mean and like becoming more aware of 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 art and and people and personalities and things like that and there was something that kicked in at some point where i i started to realize that ed was not, it wasn't just about being aware of playing drums it was it was a, it was a whole larger thing you know and it, i'm sure at that point in your life 20 21 years old that's that's when that starts to happen but to have to have that kind of mentorship at that age, I, I, you know, I think it did, it did wonders in a, in a lot of areas. You know, when I moved to LA, that's when I finally, you know, I kind of pulled myself out of like 
only listening to jazz for four years because I, I had to do that to survive. But it wasn't until then that I, I started to really enjoy the Beatles and Stevie Wonder and like all these, all this music that as a, as a high schooler, I, I didn't really care about. It didn't, it didn't do anything for me. But when I, when I moved to LA right after I graduated and I started to discover these things and art, you know, all of a sudden like I was reading books about Picasso and, and, and like, I mean, it sounds kind of funny, but like all these things started to mean a lot more. And um, I think that all really came from studying music and, 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 and art and, and awareness and technique and all these things so, so minutely. Uh, and, you know, I would say it was all definitely through Ed. I studied with Ed. I was there for five years and I studied with you for four of them.